So this week is a bit of an experiment. I've just bought myself a Fender Custom Shop 62 P-Bass pickup. And I am gonna try and put that pickup on this bass. The very first bass that I ever owned. This is a Korean Fender P-Bass copy. Uh, my parents bought this for me in 1994. It cost 150 pounds when it was brown, brand new. The name on the headstock is Vesta. And I understand that they were actually sued by Fender very soon after, around that time, around 1994. And so these things really didn't last very long. The electronics haven't worked for years, so they stopped working about 15 years ago. Everything's rusty in there. It needs to be completely rewired and completely redone. So I'm going to change everything. I'm going to obviously put the new pickups in, but I'm going to change the pots for the volume and the tone control. I'm going to put a new output jack on it. But it's actually a well-made P-Bass copy. Um, it's got a good neck on it. It's got a maple neck, maple fingerboard. The frets need some attention, especially up there in the higher frets. You can see they look really bad. Um, but yeah, the the, um, the tuning keys are all good. The machine heads are good. Um, the bridge is good. So it's, it's a decent copy of a Fender Precision. And I'm gonna see if I can turn this into a decent sounding P-Bass with these custom shop pickups. So let's see, let's, uh, let's open her up and see what we've got. So this is a great trick for bringing old rusty frets back to life. I'm going to clean them up with wire wool, but to protect the board, I'm first going to put down these pieces of electrical tape um, just on either side of the fret to protect the board. Um, I'm using the finest grade of wire wool you can get, which is 4-0. Uh, and I'm just going to rub the frets until they're clean again, basically. So have a look at this. So having taken the strings off and cleaned up the frets with wire wool, I've then applied some fret polish to them. So I use this stuff, which is supposed to keep the, the frets looking shiny for longer. I've no idea if it works or not, to be honest, but it can't hurt to put some on there. Um, and then I've just polished up the, the fretboard with um, just a normal guitar polish. So I would use lemon oil on most of my fretboards, but not on a maple board. You'll probably notice that most of my basses don't have maple boards. In fact, this is the only bass I have that has a maple board. But I wouldn't use lemon oil on a maple board, so I just use normal guitar polish. And I've actually got the neck looking really, really good. You can see how shiny the frets are now compared to how they were. And the neck looks in really, really good shape for a bass that's over 25 years old. So, um, yeah, this was always a really playable bass. Uh, maybe not the most inspiring sounding, but I'm hoping the Fender pickup is going to take care of that. So you can see I've already unscrewed the pots and the uh, input. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna open up the scratch plate. You can see how rusty these screws are. I've I've ordered replacement screws for these rusty screws. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm guessing that probably the wires inside are all equally rusty, but they're all gonna get torn out. So all of the electro all of the electronics, the pots, the input, the wires, everything's coming out. The pickups, obviously. So let's open the scratch plate and see what we've got. So the last time I opened up this scratch plate, I was probably about 15 or 16 years old. So it's been a long time since I've looked inside this base. But let's take this off and see what we've got. Okay. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. So. So if I take the bridge off, there should be a wire. I can see it's running through the body from the tone control and it comes out just here. So that's that's an earthing wire and it stops the pickups from buzzing. So that's a really important wire that goes through the body of the bass. I'm gonna have to figure out a way of wiring that up. Uh, I mean, this, this old wire is in a mess. I can see bits of exposed wire that are rusty and so I really don't wanna keep that same wire in there. Uh, but I don't want to, I, I need to find a replacement and find a way of getting it in there. So here it is. Here's the empty shell of my base. I've taken all the electronics out. Everything was straightforward apart from getting the old pickups out. The old pickups were held in place by two very, very old rusty screws, which were so rusty that they weren't turning one way or the other. So it took me a really, really long time to get those old pickups out. That took me longer than everything else I've done on the base put together. But you know, that's just the way it goes. We managed to get that sorted out. Um, I'm going to get a new, I've ordered a new scratch plate. So here's the old scratch plate. Uh, it's a pretty cheap plasticky single ply thing. But the reason that I'm changing it is because this is the access to the truss rod here. And this should have an access cut in there. And as you can see, it doesn't, which means that if you want to get access to that truss rod, 
you have to take the scratch plate off, which is a total pain. So I've ordered a new scratch plate. It's black. I'm changing the look as well as the sound. So I've got a black one coming, three ply, and it's got access cut so I can get into the truss rod without removing the scratch plate. So this is all ready to be rewired and have some new pickups attached. So now I have fixed the new pickups in place. So I just used the old scratch plate, put that, placed that back on top to find the position of the pickups, screwed them in. Uh, I had to make new holes because the holes weren't quite in exactly the same place as the old holes. Um, and then this uh, is my new uh, volume and tone pots and the input there. And this all came you know, already wired, so very cheap and easy to buy those already wired up for you. So the only kind of remotely fiddly job that I've had to do is just uh, feed the, the earth wire through the, the hole that's made in the base and through to the bridge. And then I had to screw the bridge back on top of to hold the earth wire into place. So these are just being held in by that one wire at the moment and the pickups are now in place. And as you can see, what you get with these Fender pickups is these two two wires you get a white wire and a black wire and then they give you a kind of wiring diagram uh, if you can see that to show you exactly where to, to, to solder each one of those wires so it's it's extremely easy to fit these pickups it's really not difficult anyone can do this you don't need to know anything about electronics or anything like that it's literally as simple as once you've connected that earth wire you've literally just got to solder these two wires um, you don't obviously have to change your volume and tone pots. I had to do that on this base because it's a really, really old base and they needed replacing. Um, but if you've got a base which has got perfectly good inputs and, and pots, then you can just leave those. And all you need to do in that case is just connect these two wires. So it's an extremely, extremely simple job and there's no expertise really required. So now I just need to get my, uh, my soldering iron out and just fix those two wires and then we should be pretty much ready to go. So here we are, soldering those two wires was a very, very quick job, took about two minutes, and then it was a question of putting the scratch plate back on. So this is still the old scratch plate. I'm not gonna wait for the new one to arrive before I get this thing going. Um, so yeah, the, the putting the volume and tone controls back on, and then the only job that I had to do which took a bit of time was setting the pickup heights. So all I've done so far is just done them with a ruler. Uh, so I've just measured them, um, but what I need to do now is actually play the bass, and uh, yeah, just check and see if there's kind of an even sound between the four strings, because just doing it with a ruler is not gonna give you a perfect setting. You actually have to play the bass and figure it out just from listening to the, the strings. So anyway, this is a big moment, because this is the first time I'm gonna hear this bass played through an amp in well over 15 years. So let's see what it sounds like. So I'm playing it through my uh, Mark Bass Little Mark III. Not bad. say this thing has really surprised me with how good it sounds um so yeah these these fender pickups are absolutely great they, they sound fantastic and this is a this is a bass now that i can use for recording if i need that p bass sound i mean you probably know if you follow my bass practice diary that i'm not really a fender p bass style player but it's great to have something like this now that i can use if i want to achieve that sound maybe in a recording or even on a gig so uh, yeah i'm very happy with the way these this thing has turned out